Hey guys, welcome to another episode. We finally get to work on the canoe again. So it's been uh, six weeks that the uh, the filler has been able to cure and properly, uh, well, properly cure and harden. And um, so I got all the all the information. I've been scouring the internet for the past couple of weeks, trying to get the best idea of what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to to complete this painting. So <clears throat> let me break it down. This episode is going to take a little bit longer to um, to upload or to, to, to complete because, uh, as I'm going to explain, it's going to take uh, a, probably a, well over a week just to complete. So first step that I need to do is just to dry sand it. Um, I'm going to take a chance and use my orbital sander. I've seen some articles use it. Some people say don't use it since it's good, you know it's kind of dangerous. Um, I'm going to use the orbital sander with. Uh, I just got picked up a pack of uh, 220. So 220, it's not too abrasive, but you got like if you're not used to orbital sander, just do it by hand. I'm I'm just playing with uh, lack of time uh, right now, so I'm actually playing hooky uh, and uh, taking some time off uh, today uh, just to get this started. So. Uh, I'm going to use the orbital sander, but I'm going to pass over as quickly as possible, kind of testing out the beginning and see if I can't get a, like what kind of, how it's going to react, uh, the, how the putty is going to react to the sander. And make sure you wear a mask because okay, this filler is just disgusting. So, uh, so first thing, like I said, dry sanding. Once the dry sanding is done, I'm going to let the, the, the dust settle, have the, the garage door open. Um, once the dust is settled, I'll clean up as much dust as I can from the canoe uh, with a tack cloth, some brush, whatever, and then we'll be ready to do the first layer of um, first coat of primer. So the paint was a big thing. Uh, I had a really hard time. I don't have anywhere uh, that sells uh, Epiphan, um, Epiphanis paint. Uh, like it's a, that's a company. There's other companies that do that, that type of paint, but it's basically an alkyd-based enamel paint. That uh, that's what you need. You need something that's very, very, very tough, and it's going to stay flexible. The alternative to that, I could have. There's some places that that order that I could order it, but it would cost me an arm and a leg for shipping since I'm in Canada. Um, so uh, quite a few articles said it's fine. Just use uh, an enamel-based uh, rust paint. It's basically, the, I don't know if it's the same thing, but it would, they say they've had great results. So I went to Home Depot and I got uh, this trim clad, um, the English side here, rust paint, okay? So we have to start with a primer. That's the other thing uh, that I wasn't sure about at the beginning either. I, I thought I was gonna just slap on three or four coats of paint and that'd be fine. So uh, I went on to, um, a couple of forums and they had strongly suggested to, to start with some said two coats some said three uh, I'll probably just do two uh, depend well actually it'll probably depend on this format so I only got a half uh, I think it's a half gallon so well it's one liter um, <clears throat> so I'll see how much it takes for and if I can get two coats out of great if I if I can only get one coat out of this can uh, then I'll probably just stick with one coat and just put more paint on it I think the one coat will I'm not looking for perfection, but uh, normally you would want to have at least two coats of primer on this. So we'll we'll uh, we'll roll it on, roll it on. Also, there's different techniques. Uh, more, uh, more traditionalists will say to to, to actually use a paintbrush and, and paint it on. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I've seen that uh, another couple of articles that I read, they said that they've been having great results with rollers. So all you have to do is you roll it on. And then I sand off quite aggressively, so that you're almost getting back to the canvas. And that that first time, you're you're basically just filling in the holes, like the the, the, the little uh, checkered marks that the canvas leaves behind. Then the second coat of primer, you sand a little bit less, and that gives you a good base. Then you can start painting. So uh, this is the only time I'm going to dry the, the when I'm going to sanding the filler. I'm going to dry sand. But after that, we'll be doing wet sanding. Uh, I've never actually done wet sanding before. Nothing really complicated about it, and I'll be explaining it as I go. So, uh, every time you put a, a new coat on, it, the sandpaper will smooth it, smooth it down, and then it'll prepare it for the next uh, next coat. <laughs> You 
know what? It's scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> you just, just touching it uh, with the the orbital sander, it, like it, it feels like very very smooth. The second I put it on, uh, I'm gonna try it with by hand. <laughs> The dust has had time has had time to settle, so uh, I'll start with the first coat of primer. It's very exciting, starting the painting. All right, um, I didn't mention a while ago, but for some reason Home Depot wasn't it didn't uh, carry a white primer. Uh, it's probably just a stocking error, but so the the best I could find was a gray. So since the top coat, I, I'm actually making a forest green. So. Um, I mean, it, it, since it's a dark color and there's going to be so, so many layers, it shouldn't make a difference that there's gray underneath. So, uh, let's just keep it going from there. Since this is an oil product, I am going to be using my, my mask again. So, let me get a bit of angle here. All right, well, that's the first coat done. Uh, I was surprised. I didn't know what to expect of how much paint that it was going to take uh, to cover the canoe. And it basically took my, my entire liter for that first coat. Now, when you're painting anything that hasn't been painted before, the first coat is always going to be the one that absorbs the most into uh, whatever you're painting. So, I mean, it, it shouldn't take as much uh, for the second coat. So. I mean, I, I want to do this right, so I'm gonna go get another another leader. So the next time, if I ever do another canoe, uh, I would I would definitely get get the uh, the full gallon. Um, yeah. So see you guys later. All right. So it's been actually three days, and I wanted to give it really the chance to completely dry. It's the first time that we're gonna sand. Uh, first time I'm trying to wet sand. Especially uh, each, each, depending on what you're sanding, it's going to feel differently. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I knew what sanding on a uh, properly cured paint is going to feel like. So uh, now at least I know with three days, it's good. Uh, so wet sanding. So <clears throat> I got 320 grit, you know, you can kind of see that there. Yeah, 320 grit on wet sandpaper. Uh, dry, wet, wet sand, right, dry, whatever. So I got my rubber sanding block. I'm just doing a section at a time, laying it properly. Here I am. Let's see how this feels. relatively painless 
uh, one quick, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, nothing much to say. I mean, as soon as you uh, you sand over it, run your hand, hand along the surface where you, where you sand it, it'll tell you the spots that you missed. As long as it's smooth, you wipe it down. Now I'm going to, now that it's completely done, I'm just going to take up as much of the water as I can. And then uh, once I know that it's completely dry, I'll be ready to give it a second coat of primer. All right, so it's been sanded and now it's uh, the time to dry. So we're ready for the second coat of primer. Okay, so that's the second coat. The second coat done. Uh, we'll let that dry another two days. And I suspected uh, the second coat didn't take nearly as much as uh, the first coat uh, to to do. So I got plenty of paint left for a third third primer coat, which I'm going to take it. Um, I spent too many hours on this thing to skimp on the finish. So if uh, an extra couple of coats of primer and finish is going to get some more protection i'm pretty hard on my thing so i want to give myself all the chances i can and also the the thicker the finish the more times you sand uh the smoother and the shinier the the, the final product will be so it's all it's all good so we'll skip right to the color so what we're using here is uh chum clad rust paint oh sorry i got to the french side uh Rust paint, so same thing, oil-based rust paint, which I think is the same thing as the uh, alkyde uh, based, or it is the alkyde based anyway. Uh, so we went with uh, gloss green. So this looks pretty dark. So this is the only green they had, so <laughs> it'll be what it'll be. So three coats, I'll have time to do three coats of, of this. Uh, so that'll get me to uh, Friday. And um, and then I'll publish this episode. Uh, once that's done, we still got some trimming to do. I want to add some more colors to it, but so we'll see how it goes. Well, this is the before, well, this is the last coat I'm about to sand. Um, so until now we have two coats of primer and one coat, sorry, uh, and two coats of finish. So you see that the, if, with each sanding, it just keeps getting smoother and smoother. I mean, you still see some rivulets. You see how now when I get really close, you kind of see that it's shiny, but uh, it's not a, like a perfect car finish or anything. But honestly, I could I could leave this as is, like finish wise, uh, like smoothness wise. I'm 
very happy with this already. So I will see you through with the last coat. Uh, and the final step, it, the only difference really is um, I had one suggestion or set, uh, when it, because I'm using a roller, uh, I had one suggestion that when you, you roll it a small section and then you tip it off with the brush to, to eliminate the bubbles. I just found some 600 grit. <laughs> so we'll use that. Using this uh, this pad underneath the paper seemed to work okay. I, it, it would work better with something a little stiffer, but this works a lot better than the rubber, uh, the rubber one that was just way too stiff and I was barely touching the surface. So. All right, so now it's time for the final coat. Make a small section. And, uh, uh, and I lightly drag parallel Okay, I see what you mean. Alright, we'll try this. We will do it. We will tip. I'm gonna go put my mask on now. Well, here she is. Hmm. Final coat in. Um, it's the next day, so it's not. Well, it's pretty dry. But um, very satisfied with the finish. Um, I guess I didn't really know what to expect, since it is the first time I'm painting canvas. I would have liked it to be uh, as smooth as a car, and I'm sure a, a professional at this, it, that's how they get it. But um, in general, I mean, it's pretty nice. The finish is uh, pretty uniform. You can see with the glare there, kind of, there's still a little bit of rib rivulets. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. But in general, I mean, it's uh, it's very nice. So before I can do anything else uh, with that, I'll uh, the next step I will try. I'll think on it to make sure, but I'm gonna try to do a bit more um, artsy things. Uh, I got a, a spray can of the same type of paint in silver and black. Uh, I, I want to see if I can't put either a logo or something so uh, I'll think on it uh, I'm actually in vacation next week so uh, I'm not gonna have any content uh, for at least uh, the next two weeks uh, we'll see when I get back what I what I can work on but uh, at least the painting's done so hopefully uh, it hopefully it helps uh, someone out in uh, trying to figure out how to how to complete their project it was a pretty uh, painless uh, experience just sand paint sand paint sand paint and uh, and then done so Anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys next time.